to treat COVID-19. Sponsored by the California Department of Public Health. Relive the harrowing experiences and gripping stories of... All right, let's just roll right into it here. Uh, part 3, 1958, Emerson, metal, portable, tabletop, kitchen, television, AM radio. Part 1 was an analysis. Part 2 was the... Uh, AM radio, which is working right now. Part three, let's dig right in to try and get the TV to work. This is probably going to be a lot more complicated than part one and two. But this thing has surprised me. It really has. Lots of modifications in this TV. I keep running into modifications everywhere I go. Um, the first one was... 25DN6 has been replaced with a 12DQ6. This appears to be an all-around better horizontal output tube. The other one had an ion magnet on it to control Barkhausen oscillations. There's a thing on these tubes called a snivet snubber. Say that a few times. Snivet snubber. And it's the way that they control the third grid to prevent oscillations that interfere with the tuner. If you're interested in that, look up Barkhausen oscillations and what it does to the picture and the ghetto way to control it by putting an ion magnet over the outside envelope of the tube. I covered that a little bit in part one. Uh, but yes, this is the Snivet Snubber television. So they went from 25DN6 to a 12DQ6. Both are 600 milliamp filaments. Um, this one, of course, is half the voltage, but it looks like twice the tube. Probably an updated version. So we're going to leave it alone. They rewired the socket. They bypassed the power fuse here. They did a lot of work with these electrolytic capacitors. And... I was just checking something else and I noticed that on the schematic when you go when you use the switch this switch t go this switch here goes from television to phonograph to radio when you switch this to television it is supposed to cut off the filaments in these tubes which I'm not going to do this for long, but... You are planning to fly out tonight or pick somebody up, but... And we've got a brand new, cro a brand new crash in the car. So you, you should have seen those go dim, but they didn't. And probably this is one other modification they made to help absorb the extra 12 volts from this different tube. They upped these resistors, and they probably disconnected the bypass so that those are always lit, helping absorb the extra voltage across the series string filament. Uh, part one, we, part two, I'm sorry, all we really did is added one capacitor down there to try and get some grid voltage off of the audio output. Now we got to get into the horizontal, and I probably need to check this coil and see if this is open. But anyway, yeah, let me think about where we start with this. I'm going to leave the tuner tubes and the CRT out for now. Let's see if we get... Um, I don't want to pull this off to check the... This is really loose. I don't want to break that tube. But I think maybe what we do is we put the scope on the grid and see if we're getting a sine wave out of the horizontal. But we can check a lot of this with just by checking voltages on this tube. And again, now we can't use a schematic because this is a different tube and they rewired the bottom of it. So this is where it's going to start to get interesting. But I should be able to, with it, with it the way it is right now with this power resistor basically bypassing the filaments of these three tubes meaning the CRT and the two tuner tubes should be able to get a vertical deflection we should be able to hear the vertical and we should be able to get high voltage 
Let's we'll start by marking these pots. I cleaned all of these, sprayed them all. So we'll just kind of set, set them in the middle here. Next thing I want to do is mark, mark these pins here uh, for the 12 DQ6. And I want to look at G1. We want to look at G1 for horizontal oscillator. We want to look at G2 for voltage. And that's really about it. I'm not worried much about the cathode. We could check it. It might just be grounded. So this is G2, which is connected to this contraption. So they must have had to improvise to get the right voltage on G2. And then G3, which is where the signal comes in, is... Oh, that's... that's... That's real nice. Yeah, I like that. That's that's sexy. Just hang it in midair there, kids. So G1 is the 100 ohm, G2 is this contraption. All custom modified. So if we just if we're doing DC voltage checks, we should have around 110 on G2. Around negative 25 on G1. The negative is really always what you're looking for. It's ideal to look at it with a scope. We should have 85 volts peak to peak. And about 1575 kilohertz on the frequency meter. So we'll start by looking here. Usually I check cathode or plate current. The cathode here is directly grounded. So we're not going to worry about that. We'll we'll start with uh, we'll start with G two. If G two is high, we have excessive plate current. If G two is low, we have insufficient plate current. Okay. Well, we're on radio and we got. 41 volts on G2. I don't know why. That seems like that would burn the tube up. Um, the horizontal output tube should not be doing anything with the radio. Year after year to bag presence. So here we go. That should be phono. That should be TV. Okay, well, it's low. I am still on the light bulb. Please, we put out flyers for any any family in need to come in and sign up and write letters to Santa and say what they want for Christmas. What is the history behind Off Santa? How long has it been around here? Well, we have negative 2.8 volts. That is very very crappy we should look at that with a scope drops over the past six weeks gas prices are actually up but not ask for a ceasefire meantime there's word that one of the mm. it's a little bit of something there but not much god i don't want to run it like that for long let me see There it is. There it is. Uh, 16 kilohertz. That's that's about right. Let's look at the actual peak to peak. I'm gonna go full smack here. So the peak to peak is uh, 33 volts. That's kind of low. I'll try real quick. I'll try hitting bypass on the light bulb. 50 volts it's okay so there is horizontal there is a signal here to this tube uh, let me try and adjust it on the the horizontal hold control interesting it doesn't seem to make any difference 
16 point yeah yeah it makes a tiny bit of difference why do we not have any high voltage there's a tiny bit of high voltage there maybe a kilovolt very weak taking a look at the uh, G1 on the vertical output tube pin 5 there and that's what we should have 30 Hertz 20 volts peak to peak uh, we have 20 Hertz I'm going to try and adjust it here with the vertical hold control Well, that hardly makes any difference either. It goes from 19, 18 hertz up to 22 hertz at 23 volts. So uh, the vertical is running. It's this is this is going to be bad wax capacitors. The vertical is never going to work. It's never going to sync with all those wax paper capacitors in it. Right now, 59 degrees. Okay, so low high voltage could be. Oh, well, now there's a little bit more there. Yeah, very weak. Very weak. Doesn't even draw off of there. Let me bypass the thing here. Yeah, I, I mean, this should, this, sh I don't know what this thing, it should be a lot higher than that. Uh, that could be bad capacitors, bad yoke, bad flyback, bad tubes, bad, a lot of bad things can cause that. Looks like we got about four kilovolts here. Uh, let me bypass the light bulb. Five kilovolts. We got a doorknob capacitor here. These don't go bad, do they? This is 500 picofarads at 10,000 volts. This is supposed to have 10,000 volts on it. We need to add this to this to filter it because the CRT acts as a capacitor. So, in order to get an accurate rating, we need to do that. And you'll see, you can see it. does increase quite a bit we're really not that far off yeah pop that in your mouth now let's see if Michael Buble is Mubel Bloomer Dibubon Bubaluble Bloomer. Come on, baby. Michael Buble Dibubel. Oh, Bubble Bloomer. Some solder blobbed on there. Look at that, Michael Buble Dibubel Bloomer Bloomer. Well, I need a little help with this because I don't understand this, and I'm sure there's a reason for it. Because you can say it's an Emerson and it's a foaming toilet turd circling the drain from the very beginning, but they have this engineered so that basically what happens is let me show the other schematic this is the horizontal output tube right here you can see there's two resistors that feed g2 33k and 470k i'm sorry 33k and 470 ohm when the set is on whether it's radio phono or tv there's always voltage on the 33k when you switch to TV, it puts 
voltage on the 470 ohm, thereby giving a lot more voltage to G2 and running the tube a lot harder. Why would they want the tube powered up when it's on radio? I mean, is this something, would, would it strip the cathode? Why wouldn't you cut the voltage off? Why wouldn't you cut the voltage off to this and just completely make the whole horizontal section dark? Why would you want to run... Obviously, you're cutting the oscillator off, the horizontal oscillator. Why would you want to sit there and just run power into the horizontal output tube, basically like a heater, a DC heater? Because that's what this thing is in radio mode. You can see it's drawing plate current in radio mode. I can find the volume control here. Sometimes I struggle to get to sleep. My body stopped for the day, but my mind is still running. So I take ZQL. So that's TV. Why the hell would you just run, sit there and let the horizontal output tube conduct all the time with it on radio or phono input? That makes, this, this thing makes no sense to me, and this is not something the guy did. This is the way that it's engineered from the factory. And this, the plate current on this tube should really be up more towards 100 milliamps. This is kind of low. It's kind of on the low side, and I don't know why. I think the other tube has a higher mutual conductance, more gain. And actually, if I bypass the light bulb, we do start to get up to where it should be. But the high voltage still just isn't quite there. I think this might just be a case of Everything is good. It just needs to be restored. Like, probably the selenium rectifier is a little bit tired, so the B-plus is low. Probably the tubes are a little bit tired. All the wax capacitors are lowering the voltage. I think if you restored this, just a bunch of little things would help bring this up to where it should be. But we'll get, a, we'll get light on the screen at this, at this voltage. We should be able to get an image, but you know maybe the maybe the uh, uh, rectifier is weak. The six DQ six is or twelve DQ six is weak. Probably that twelve AX four. It's probably just a combination of a lot of little things. But I don't think the yoke or the flyback are bad. I don't. I just think it needs to be restored, recapped, and restored. With the light bulb bypassed on radio, our B plus is 115. So yeah, we're about 20 volts low, which would make up, you know, that's a weak selenium rectifier. I wonder if the reason they're leaving this tube active is to basically use it as a like a shunt regulator and just keep a load on the power supply when you're in radio and phono mode because... If you take the load completely off, the voltage is probably going to go up 20, 25 volts. You know, when everything's working right. In fact, we could we could see how much it goes up. So here. So that's with the light bulb bypassed. So it's 115. I'm going to disconnect this. I'm in radio mode right now. So it, it sort of... It sort of holds about, looks like it holds about 10 volts off of the the power supply. But yeah, it'll help keep it down. Because when you went from TV to radio, if you cut all these other loads off, the B plus would spike. I wonder if that's why they're doing it. Stupid. Telecheck. I wanted to use this. But it doesn't 
seem to like the impedance. The yoke inside this thing seems to be a bad impedance match to this modern of a set. I think this thing was designed for older stuff. You know, like maybe 1950 and older, 1955 and older. So anyway, that's that's the image that we've got and you can see the vertical is running way too slow. We saw that in the frequency on the frequency meter and the scope. That's going to be capacitors in the vertical circuit, all those wax capacitors. I really don't want to try and fumble with the bigger CRT even though it tests good. Someone did post a comment on the last video that mentioned maybe it's gassy, that's why it's testing good. That's possible, but trying to fiddle with that chassis in this thing is going to be very difficult. That's why I wanted to use this little black and white jig, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a match. Let me see if I have one of those test tubes I can stick in here. This is an 8XP4 receiver test tube. <sighs> Looks like it's lighting up there. No ion trap required. I think this is... This holiday season, spread the joy to family and friends by filling your hopper. Well, Silacroin Dibibalizer. Uh, that is some really That is some really whacked looking. I don't even know what to think of that. I didn't black out the light. The dot in the middle is interesting. Is that ion burn? It almost looks like ion burn. Because a lot of these test tubes, they were, they, they just, no ion trap, they just, they just blast right out the front. It's really sort of hard to tell without a video signal, but it looks like the vertical's running way too slow, again, which we knew, because it would only go up to 20 hertz. And the, um, looks like there might be some hum in it. Maybe we put it on an isolation transformer and feed video IF directly into the video IF bypassing the tuner. That little ion burn, that's kind of annoying. That's why they put an ion magnet on these things so you don't end up with that. I can't believe that... See, later they aluminized the CRTs which took care of that, but... I can't believe you'd put enough time, enough hours on a test tube to burn an ion hole in the middle of it. Okay, 45.75, I got it cranked all the way up. Since this is a hot chassis set, I'm not going to connect the ground. I just literally have the clip lead clipped onto the capacitor there. I'm going to try and couple it through the capacitor. I'm going to turn the lights off and we'll... We'll do uh, something here. Window circle, or I don't know. Okay. Well, horizontal. Well, we can't lock the horizontal. And we can't lock the vertical. I 
think it is passing video though. How about audio? Let's see here. Uh, well, that is working. How about that's crosshatch. It is definitely passing video. We just can't, because of all the bad capacitors, we can't adjust the horizontal and vertical frequency right in order to get it to lock. But it does sort of look promising. God, that ion burn, man, that's horrible. We can actually do kind of a no-no, which is go in here and tweako crinculate oh there we go didn't take much getting close that will let me tweak that will let me tweak the horizontal but that won't Boy, the horizontal sink is good because I can go from one end to the other. So the sink is working. Since the vertical is running way too slow. So we're going to have to change some caps. I have to do caps in the in the vertical in order to resurrect it. I didn't want to do any caps. I wanted him to do the caps. But I think we're almost there except the caps. There's contrast. There's brightness. Yep, vertical just getting there, huh? There's dots. Maybe that's crosshatch. I don't know what that is. There's your uh, staircase. Okay, time to stop wasting time with this. We know we know where we're at. We got pretty much a working set. Uh, let me see how low I can go on the. I think the IF is working pretty good because I'm not even directly coupled. And let me see, I can. No, I can't go to 500 microvolts. Or yeah, but I can get to about a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So we're good on the IF. We're good on the sync. We're good on the sound. We're good on the video. We just vertical. Vertical is our hold up here. I'm looking the vertical circuit over and that is paper, that is disc. Those two 1000s are ceramic disc. That 0047, I think that's probably the culprit at 10%. I believe that's the green one right there. Tropic cap. I don't think it's tropical no more. That green one, I, I have a feeling that one is our main timing capacitor. Because all these other ones are discs, except those two. But I don't know if those would really throw the frequency off that far. So I think we're going to change that green tropic cap. Just going to change that little green 0047 right there. 
I'm going to try and lift one side of it up and then tack the new one on the bottom. We'll see if we can get the vertical to speed up enough to actually lock and sink. Got a new one here. Like I guess I'm just going to pop it on the bottom. Got it. Had to pull the transformer back, but I got it tacked across the bottom here. And the top one lead of the other one lifted off the top. Well, there we go. We've sort of got it. Except it's got some AC hum from the bad filters and it loses lock. But that capacitor brought it in to where I could actually get it to sync up. And there it is. Well, I'm testing the capacitors and this is a like a postage stamp and it says mica mold on it. It's a 0.01, it goes from the plate, it couples the plate back to the rest of the circuit. It is C42 right there, and it is measuring shorted and shorted. It wasn't initially measuring shorted, but now it's, I don't know. But it, it never measured capacitor at all, it never opened the eye, so I'm going to change it. Well, that did it. That capacitor, that one that said mica mold, never, never trust these to not be paper. I bet you if we broke that open, I bet you that guy is paper inside, which there's a couple more of those down in there. I would change all of them. Don't trust them. They're not mica. They're paper. They're paper inside of a mica's body. So if I, the it's a little bit off because I need to replace the electrolytic on the cathode, then it's a perfect circle. There you go. Let's see if we can set you up there. See what we can do here. Look at the ringing right here. Look at the ringing. But you know, who knows? We're just coupled in right through the capacitor, brighter at the bottom than the top. Dots. Grayscale, not real good, is it? See, it starts to go up, and then it starts, as I turn the brightness up, it just loads the high voltage down. See how it blooms at the top there? That's it losing high voltage. I'm sure with a full recap, get rid of that selenium rectifier, put, find the appropriate dropping resistor to get the right B+. Marginally lousy bandwidth. Well, I don't know. You can see the lines all the way over here. All the way on the right side, you can see them. I still can't believe this thing has got screen burn. I just, or ion burn in the middle there. That's a trip. Anyway, we're getting there. Now we just need the tuner tubes and get the tuner to work. Then we can actually feed some channel 3-4 into it. Yeah, it's gonna just, looks like it's gonna just be capacitors. Uh, look, really looks like it's gonna, what it's gonna need. 
I did check the other two paper capacitors in there. One of them was good. The other one was marginal, but not horrible. Well, I hope this is not considered too harsh. You can see I've clinko-twerculated with paper towels here. We're just going to moisten this up real nice. And then we're going to let the drill do the work here. Go in reverse. Look at the way the freaking coil spins. Don't want to burn the freaking contacts up. Lube it up a little bit more. Clean all this rust and corrosion out of this thing. Wonder how many RPMs. I wonder. Wonder at what speed the uh, the parts will start to fly off the wafers. I don't think we want to find that out, do we? Okay, now I gotta find the tubes. Hopefully this thing works. You can see how this works. There are the brushes right there and then those little round dimples are the points that contact the brushes. And it looks nice. It looks like it cleaned up okay. Yeah, I think we're happy here. Got the tuner tubes populated. You can usually find the, the number stamped on the tuner. See it right there, 3BC5, and over here, 5AT8. Because I know they, the schematic offers like four different tuners. I'm checking that green capacitor that I originally suspected was causing the sink issue. And yeah, it's not leaky, but we barely get an eye opening, and it's supposed to be in... A 0047 and it's measuring like 007 so it's gone way up in value and it's lossy I'm gonna replace this mica mold that we found that was shorted 0.01 brown black orange with yet yeah, brown black orange 0.01 103 at yellow 400 volts so that's how you read that. Brown, black, orange, 103, and then yellow dot is 400 volts. I'm going to replace it with this more modern um, 0.01. We temporarily use the disk capacitor there, the 0.01 at 3 kilovolt disk, which we've discovered that disk capacitors sometimes don't work well in vertical circuits. They don't like the low frequency something something. So we'll use this gray one. Got the test tube back in. Tuner clean. Tubes put in it. Got rid of the uh, filament resistor. So we're just straight up on the line now. Should take a second. And if I didn't clarify it in this video. This, this set belongs to a younger collector that's local. And... He likes to work on them, and he's learning, and he loves old TVs and radios. And this is a little bit of a struggle for him, so I'm just going through it and resurrecting it, making sure everything is good and everything is solid. And then once I do that, he's going to get the tubes and recap it, do a full recap, straighten all this stuff out. I'll give him all the schematics that I printed out, and just let him practice on... And learn how to, you know, do this stuff. He's pretty good. We've worked on some stuff for him before. He makes 
you know, little mistakes, but that's part of the learning process. Nothing wrong with that. So that's why I'm not going full, like, uh, B. Anderson TV Restore on this. So I'll let him do that. Well, that's encouraged. That's very encouraging. Let's get the generator hooked up to it on channel 3. Oh yeah, we have some activity here. The tuner seems kind of hot. Well, this is proving to be very challenging. Something doesn't seem right here. I don't know what channel's what. Well, if I blast into the tuner on 41.75 or 45.75, if I do that, it works, but I can't get anything on any of the channels. And it seems like the tuner's working, but I, I just can't get anything to work. And I looked at the size of the coils to figure out what, you know, what the channel 2 was and worked my way up from there but uh, I don't know can't get anything through the tuner well I grabbed another 5AT8 tuner tube mixer oscillator and it did no difference and I don't know what to think of this uh, horizontal hold does not adjust this What's going on here? Is this the Barkhausen crap coming out of that horizontal output tube? Because if I go into the IF frequency, it works fine. I also tried adjusting these slugs in here, and they basically just bring it into the fine tuning. So it's like the set is, the tuner is working, but it's like there's outside interference, or I, I don't know. I don't know what to think of this. Maybe this is the problem with the set. Maybe this is why they gave up. That's why the tuner shield is missing. You know, the the cleaning thing I did, that there's no way that hurt it. There's no way. Well, I cut this resistor loose. They had this bypassing the filaments. And that sure did drive the sensitivity. The sensitivity is insane now. Still, that's all I get. Well, I don't know what to say. It just kind of started working on its own. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Started working on its own. So. I didn't do anything. I just rotated the channel around. I was trying it on channel 13. Then I came back to 2. And then 3. And I don't know. The sensitivity seems okay. That's a thousand microvolts right there. I left it off overnight. I just turned it on. And it looks like it's... Oh. I needed to reconnect that to there so it looks good it looks like it held except where'd the vertical go the vertical deflection on the bottom seems to have clinko twinkulated that's okay we know it needs this it ne yeah see how it's not round now we know it needs this electrolytic capacitor that's in the cathode of the vertical output now you can shop till you drop the new HughesNet is Jupiter powered with unlimited data and faster speeds than ever before. Now I can stream up anything I can dream up. That's right. And HughesNet Fusion plans combine satellite and wireless technologies for a faster, more responsive internet experience. 
Ooh, there's no shame in my game. Yeah, there's no sh no shame in the fact that HughesNet and Viasat are pretty much having to give away service because Starlink just smokes the living. So there it is, hooked up to the DirecTV. And yeah, this vertical lock issue is really... Yes, yes, yes. Just keep telling the lie over and over until they believe it. That's that's the way you roll today. Let's see if we can penetrate the sound coil. I have a really long diddle stick here. Uh, the sound coil is down there. Every day, and it's almost like, do these suspects realize like what they're risking by just sitting and... Uh, and, and acting like this and refusing to comply, it's almost like they're just uh, in kind of denial of reality. Absolutely, and sometimes we watch as they make, it appears, phone calls and perhaps talking to family or friends before they know they are taken into custody. We are going to continue to follow this, and uh, we will have it in the lower uh, screen there for you so we continue to watch it, but we are going to continue to bring you the day's news and of course we will update you with this and uh, bring you the full picture uh, when we see that there is some movement and things begin to change in the situation but again this is a police pursuit that uh, has ended with a pursuit uh, with a pit maneuver and the driver now at that truck cleaned it up a little bit there's still a little noise this thing really needs to be recapped and i i don't know if this is back of cost but they I don't, this is this is really they did some wild thing. This is like double wild. Drop them down. Smack down music. Yeah, I got it about as good as I'm going to get it, I think. So I changed the vertical oscillator. I'm trying to figure out what's causing this. This is like a conflict between the line frequency hum and uh the vertical oscillator what it is is there's a hum bar moving through and when it gets to a certain point it rolls and then it stops i i tried changing the six uh, fq7 six cg7 the vertical oscillator so i'm just it's almost like a bad bad ground stake or a bad filter capacitor. But yeah, it doesn't hold sync and it's a pattern. It starts and stops. Okay, I changed the uh, 12W6 vertical output tube and I think it's still doing this. I'm looking for like a heater to cathode leak where we're getting the 60 hertz laid on top of the vertical oscillator I'll tell you it's so weird listening to classic country the classic country station on this just is, you know it's just like listening to some weird AM radio out in the desert it just has that sound and that vibe with that little speaker but yeah that's not it so maybe like a bad ground stake or something on one of the boards Okay, I think it's the main filter. I don't know how I missed it. But I, I just went, and yeah, I'm a little bit oversized right now, but it's what I found. I just went from the selenium uh, straight to ground, and I'm using a big capacitor here. This is an 820, and it's supposed to be a 250, but, but look at this. Watch when I disconnect it here. See. From side to side. I'm not putting any pressure so when I and it glides so nicely on the floor. When I connect it, see how the voltage goes up, it gets brighter and bigger. See that? And just watch what it does to your floors. Let me remind you, you're cleaning with steam. You're not cleaning with chemicals. It weighs less than five pounds. 
It'll cut through the grease in the grind. The reason I've got this maze here is I want you to see how agile the X5 is. It's specially designed triangular head gets up against your baseboards. Oh, you you see know, what you see you see unlike other steamers, the X5 has adjustable steam. So if you've got delicate floors or water sensitive wood floors like this, you can turn it down to a setting that's right for the surface you're cleaning. Steam it out, Let daddy. Steam, steam it out. The microfiber go to work. Get up against your baseboards. You're using superheated water. I'm going to turn it up to maximum because I want to get into the grout on this tile. Now watch this. Mm. Without any effort, the steam penetrates. It goes deep down into the grout, getting rid of all the dirt, the grease, and the grime. Using the power of steam and using... This is fire. not... You can just this is how you get rich now. You come up with some stupid gimmick thing like this and you have it made in china for hardly anything out of plastic with an engineered life of like three months and, and people buy it and then three months later it's in the trash this is how you get rich now not by not by honest hard work and devotion and dedication it's by coming up with some crappy plastic crap and having it made in china and then selling it to dumb chemicals just effortlessly letting the x5 glide across the surface cleaning polishing sanitizing deodorizing all at the same time at less than oh, five pounds get it done you can go straight from marble to your delicate wood floors and if you want to get underneath your bed underneath your couch watch this it lays practically flat it gets rid of the dirt the grease and the grime i've just cleaned all these surfaces with one tank of water and one pad the X and then you get some some guy with an accent to narrate it and voice over it and you come up with all these stupid graphics think steam think clean now harness the power of water with the h2o x5 5 in 1 steam cleaning system with over oh it's a system worldwide now it's even better with our 10 piece system to make your steam cleaning experience even better if you're ready to step into an effective economical and eco safe world of cleaning oh eco safe h2o x5 using just the power of superheated water, the X5 Super Hot Steam cleans and kills up to 99% of germs, viruses, and bacteria. Gotta make it COVID safe. Steamer that heats up in seconds, blasting away dirt, grease, and grime on every surface. 1,300 watts of steam penetrate deep into the nooks and crannies. The superheated steam loosens the dirt while the microfiber pad locks it in, cleaning and polishing at the same time. And now with variable steam, there's a perfect super clean setting for virtually any floor from tough tile to natural hardwood. Under the black light, you can see a mess. It could be anything. And if you have kids or pets, it needs to be clean. The X5 it cleans at 230 degrees with the added power of microfiber so it cleans without chemicals. You'll also receive the carpet glider free. Effortlessly steam away stains and breathe life back into old carpet. But that's not all. Your X5 turns into an amazing handheld scrubber. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and I'm going to try and get a capacitor in there. And then what we'll do is we'll put this thing back in the... Um, back in and see how the original crt is and someone wanted to see a ball drop video i i don't know why i don't know why we want to see the ball drop i don't want to ring in the new year it's just going to be it's, it's, next year is just going to be out of control man it's just going to be when that uh, when that ball drops it's just going to be like the hammer drops you could spend over $500 to purchase the products that the X5 5-in-1 Miracle replaces. But through this Miracle. special TV offer, you won't spend $400, $300, or even $200. Order your H2O X5 steam cleaning system of $500 value Ooh. for just four easy payments of $43. You'll oh yes, let me get let me get a payment plan on my Chinese junk. Scrubber, the window glass and mirror attachment, and the garment and upholstery bonnet. Now with variable steam, it's a complete ten-piece system. All this for just four easy payments of forty-three dollars. Clean your home top to bottom, chemical free with. The it's like those uh, those medication advertisements where they have some, you know, upbeat music playing. Well. People are dancing while they're telling you you're 
perineum is going to get infected and you're going to die. And it's like, do, 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 do. It's like. It's valued at over $30. This extra bonus attachment makes your H2OX5 the H2OX6. That means your 10 piece system becomes a 12 piece system at no extra Oh, a 12. I think I'll wait for the X7 to come out. Delighted. Send it back for a full refund of the purchase price. Don't wait. Now's your chance to own the X5 for just four easy payments. And we'll make the first payment for you. You get the X5 incredible. 5-in-1 lightweight, powerful 12-piece steam cleaning system a $500 value, all for just three easy payments of $43. What a bunch of bullshit. Interesting that the ESR to that point is an ohm and a half, which you would not think is you know, open, but it must be severely reduced capacitance. Well, another problem here is we're supposed to have 250, 250, and 120. And this is the one we're measuring the ESRs okay on. I didn't check the capacitance value. That is the first one. The second one has been replaced with not a 250, but a 50. So this is 200 microfarads too low. See, these wires come to here. See, this is the 120 ohm resistor that is right there. And between this point and this point is the filter choke. So we need 200 more microfarads here. And then this is supposed to be the 120, and I don't know what it is because they have one section of the 50 in parallel with it, whatever's left over here. So yeah, this needs a complete recap. It needs a... a 250, 250, and 120, and all this other junk taken out of here. It needs all three of these electrolytics changed. So we knew that. Well, actually, this one does, should not exist. This one's been paralleled in there. So this one needs to get out of here, and we need the right new electrolytics in here which are not that many it's it's four it's one two three and then this one which is the cathode bypass for the vertical output so yeah this is just bodgetastic i'll have to come up for something with something for this so we can watch the ball drop well the one with the 1 1.5 ohm esr the main filter that was supposed to be 250 it's measuring 214. That's not too bad, actually. So literally, where they're supposed to have 250 microfarads, they have 66.1. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to move that one over to there. We're going to double that up. And then we're going to put something there on the secondary of the filter choke. The butchering continues. Now it's me doing it, but I think I got it a lot better than they had it. So this is the first filter, and this is supposed to be 250 microfarads, and it was measuring 214 or whatever, whatever it was. Um, this was supposed to be 250. Also, this is a second filter after the choke. They had this at 50, which was one of these two red wires that goes up to this double 50. What I did is I got rid of that, and I moved both of them over to here, because this is supposed to be 120. So it's actually measuring right at 120 right now, because these are like 60, not 50. Uh, so this is right, and then for here, which is the one that was supposed to be 250, but was 50, I just bodged on another big ass 680 or something there, just temporarily so we can watch the ball drop. Well, the high voltage is notably low. It's 6.7. It should be really up around 10 to 12. That's with the brightness down. It's with the brightness all the way up. It's it's very weak. And of course that could be bad capacitors. I mean, I'm sure bad capacitors are not helping and bad paper capacitors and that modified tube modification thing that 
yeah, maybe the high voltage rectifier is weak. Maybe it has something to do with there's no Aquadag on this little test CRT. I don't know, but I think we're good enough to where I got it to where he can dig into it and restore it knowing everything's okay. So we'll pop the big CRT in it and we'll watch the ball drop. Here's the set if we forgot what it looked like from part one. Uh, and since the tube is loose in here, I'm going to, I'm going to just pull it out the front. It's supposed to go in from the front and have a band around it, but somehow it came out of the band. And we'll just set it in the chassis and not put the thing together. Well, the band is actually part of the case. What a what a cheap ass. How the hell would this work? It would only it would only tighten up on the top two corners. Man, what a cheap ass TV. Anyway, I think we were suspecting this was the original tube. It tested good, but we won't actually know if it's gassy or whatever till we get it in there. Oh, look at this. Hi. Hi. See? It could be cool and write Happy New Year on it. H N Y. Happy New Year. Well, never really found a peach pit in a TV before. This this is definitely a first. Yeah, obviously it had this tape on the corners that dried out and came off. But yes, we have a peach pit inside the TV. Wow, I certainly hope this thing will produce enough high voltage to drive this big monster compared to that little test tube I was using. Anyway, um, this is the one non-negotiable item is the ion trap magnet. And the point of this is, a brief explanation, is it on the test CRT we had a dark burnt spot right in the middle of the phosphor. Well, this prevents that on a non-alunamized CRT. See, later they alunamized the CRTs and then they could get rid of this and just go with a straight straight gun because the aluminization would uh, prevent the ions from burning the hole in the phosphor. So, yeah, we got to get this on here. And I, I marked it, see, yellow. Not to say it was right. So we got to get this on there and then we got to hopefully get it get it uh, going, fired up, and then adjust this thing. These things are a pain in the ass. They're always, always out of adjustment. Don't ever think just because you found a, uh, an untouched TV that the thing does not need adjustment because it does. And you just adjust it. You just adjust it by kind of doing this kind of thing with it. You move it back and forth and round and round until you get it to alunamize. So we're going to watch the ball drop. Ring in 24, the year of chaos. Brightness all the way up. Nothing. To probably make sure there's some high voltage here. Just to, uh, Skinko sprinkulate. Yeah. Not much. Um, okay, so brightness, we'll put the brightness up a little bit. And I'm going to rotate the ion magnet. Let's see if we can get anything here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Wow, look at that. Okay. 
wow, I need to rotate the yoke a little bit. Well, the CRT is as it tests. Uh, the line at the top, this is just this the waviness in the line, that's all going to just be capacitors. That's all that's going to be. It needs all the paper capacitors changed. Alexis Glick. I'm Alexis Glick. I'm Alexis Glick. Yes, presented by presented by a big commercial criminal corporation. Dr. Jill Biden, it's nice to see you once again. Thanks for coming on. God. Thank you, Ryan. Happy New Year. Thanks for having us. Uh, Mr. President, before we start here about the new year, I'm curious, what sort of holiday foods have you been enjoying over the last few days? Well, I've been eating everything that's put in front of me. I've been eating pasta, which I love. Yeah. eating a lot of chicken, chicken parmesan. <laughs> I've been eating all, all Italian foods, basically. And ice cream. And ice cream. Chocolate chip ice cream. It's good to know that you're eating like the rest of us here across the country. As you look back and reflect on 2023, what sort of, of memories, highlights stand out for you? Well, one of the big highlights stands out for me is my dad used to have an expression. He'd say, Joey, your job's about a lot more than the paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. So many people through the Midwest and, and, and in the, the center of the country, their, their factories are shipped overseas the last couple times out, and, and they were losing hope and faith. So we brought a lot of jobs back to the United States. People are in a position to be able to make a living now, and uh, they've created oh, yes. a lot of jobs, over 14 million. And uh, I guess when I'm, I, I just feel good that the American people got up. See, she's correcting him. See how she looks over. Coming back. You're drifting off, so drifting off script there, Joey. Times Square and so many eyes on the big ball for Whoa. the big moment tonight as we get ready for 2024. Uh -huh. What are your hopes for the new year for both of you? Well, my hope is that everybody has a healthy, happy, and safe new year. Oh, yes. But beyond that, I hope that they're, they understand that we're in a better position than any country in the world to lead the world. Really? We're coming back, and it's about time. Bullshit. What are your hopes for America? Well, you know, I think it's what I would always tell my students. Be positive, be optimistic, and be kind to one another. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Enjoy two scoops of ice cream tonight, both of you. Thanks for coming on. We'll see you soon. <laughs> All right. <Yes>. All right. <laughs> Bye. Let's go. Bro. See the little Amazon Prime logo down here in the bottom left corner? It's all about advertising. It's all about product placement. They are about to light up the West Coast. So where, where is the Kafia Scarf group? Why are we not getting to see them? Why are they pushing them back so we can't see the whole thing here? So are you going to show us the ball drop or not? It's 9 o'clock. Oh, you're not going to show it to us. Got to roll the freaking commercials first, huh? Little sample of Ibotta. Hi, could I interest you in a sample for my bada? What's going on? It's just money. Ibotta is an app that gives you cash back every time you shop. It's the, it's 
Really? You're gonna roll a freaking commercial? Look at this. It's 901. That's LA, so it's already happened. What's the catch? There's no catch. It's just cash. Get cash back. So you're seriously not showing the freaking ball drop. You're showing commercials. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't show it. So they didn't show it. They cut it off. So they went to commercials. I guess they showed it on this channel. Oh well. Sorry. And this Frank Sinatra clip will get a damn... It's just non-stop. Oh, there you go, Kia. There you go. Happy New Year, sponsored by a Korean car company. Happy New Year, East Coasters! The New Year's party starts now! Let me break it down for you. Welcome to the show. We the show stoppers. The park is the art when I'm moving on. I don't know. Whatever. Ready for 24? The year of... I'm going to call it the year of chaos. It's going to just be insanity and chaos all year. Putting the TV back together and I got just some notes here. Uh, go over these notes real quick. Mostly for the young guy who's working on it, but just for whoever's watching, whatever. Um... The filaments did seem kind of bright, so when you do get the full set of tubes in there, you might want to measure the voltage across one of the filaments and see one of the tubes and see if it's within spec. If not, you're going to need to increase these resistors. Like I talked about in part one, the analysis, I, I, I thought this was supposed to be about 20 ohms and it's only 7. So this schematic here is from the riders. This is the TV version of the schematic only, so it does not include the radio. I can get you the SAMS PDF that I scanned. Okay, here's what the TV needs, and I think it'll work pretty good. So it needs needs all caps, okay, all the electrolytics, all these wax paper, and probably these little domino postage stamp things are paper and not plastic, okay? Uh, you need to get a 5A T8, 3CB6, 3BC5, 12W4, 12AX4, 6FQ7 slash 6CG7, same thing. Uh, those are the TV tubes. You need to get a 3BE6 and 3BA6 for the AM tuner. You need to replace the 12C5 sockets at the C audio output tube. You need a speaker. And the CRT is good, and I did it in this nice festive color pencil array thing because it is uh, New Year's Day. And hopefully, yes, make happy, sunshine, smiley face. So I pretty much returned it back. The only thing that's different is the way the capacitors are hooked up, and I'm going to leave that capacitor in there, the replacement for... I don't know it's here somewhere this one right here that one that's shorted so I'm putting all my tubes and stuff back in uh, my collection that I all have I have all uh, charted and accounted for that way when we do a resurrection or repair I know right where to go to get the tubes so you've got two copies of the schematic here Again, these are the TV only, and then you have this, which these are very nice. These show basically the traces on the PCB boards, and on this one they actually show the component values of the components in that position on the board. So these, these are usually come in the factory service manuals, and these are super, super handy when working on a set to have this imagery of a circuit board. 
Finding the tubes is part of the learning experience. Going on eBay, hunting them down, making offers, bidding on them, trying to get the best price. That's all part of the learning experience when you're resurrecting something like this. I mean, or you could just go on eBay and go to Bangy Bang Tubes and spend $25,000 and just go to your one-stop shop and just clean the bank account out. I did fix the handle on this thing with the appropriate self-locking nut. They had just tried to fix it by wrapping duct tape around it and it pulled out and scratched a circle in the top of the cabinet. So that's fixed. This is the chassis isolation capacitor. It's another one of those domino things that shorts. Um, it goes in conjunction with this right here. I'm not even going to put it back in because that needs to be replaced. Also, the ion trap is in, in about the right place. It just needs to be pushed forward a couple centimeters onto the glass and then fine-tuned. But that's about where it was. Uh, that's it. It's ready to go back home and be fully restored by its rightful owner and adopter. Because it is a cool set. It just, it just needs the TLC. There were some questions about the Packard Bell test set, and it's been doing fine. No, um, no failures lately. This is the Rose Parade, one of the first color transmitted programs. Of course, this is 24, so that was a few years ago. I did add this power monitor, and I made a video on it when I added it, and I figured I would include the video in the next repair of the set but the set's been trouble free so when we do have another problem and I do an update video I'll include the installation of this little power meter and I guess I added it 132